Welcome to this special edition of The Sport of Bowling Show. On this episode, we feature InsideBowling.com founder Mike Flanagan, PBA Commissioner Tom Clark, USBC Deputy Executive Director Jason Overstreet, 2018 PBA Player of the Year Andrew Anderson, USBC Senior Director of Digital Media Jason Thomas. And now, it's time for The Sport of Bowling Show. Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you may be in the world. Uh, today is Tuesday, December the 6th, and we'd like to welcome you to a very special edition again of The Sport of Bowling Show. My name is Mike Flanagan. I will be your host today, and we have several guests for you throughout the show. In just a moment, I'm going to bring in Jason Thomas, like we do every single week. And then we will also speak with Jason Overstreet from USBC, along with Tom Clark from the PBA, as well as Andrew Anderson a little bit later in the show as well. So we have a lot to get to here today, but the big topic is Bowl TV. Got the shirt right here. I want my Bowl TV. This has been coming together for a long time, everybody. This is uh, something that I think every bowling fan wanted, is bowling in one place, and it gets to be right here uh, at bowling headquarters underneath the Bull TV media outlet. So uh, we're very, very excited about that. Uh, you may have seen uh, the announcement that came out. If you haven't, you can check it out over on bowl.com. But to get into a little bit of the details here, but we'll get into much more later in the show, of course, I want to bring in from USBC headquarters in the studio, Jason Thomas. Jason, hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you today? It's a great day to be alive. I think uh, as the country song is the way that it goes. But uh, man, I've been live streaming since 2010 and you've been live streaming since before then. You are one of the pioneers, a first ballot Hall of Famer if there was such a thing. And I think back in the day, if we could have dreamed something up, uh, it would look like something that it is today. PBA, PBA 50, PBA Junior, PWBA collegiate junior gold and regionals all on one network how are you feeling about that one it's it's incredible uh the the day we made the the announcement for me it was kind of like a full circle moment uh i was hired by tom clark a long time ago to uh kind of revitalize extra frame it was kind of struggling and so i jumped in and with the help of a lot of really great people we we built it into something uh, that was a very important piece of the PBA business. Uh, then I walked away from it, which was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make in my life. Uh, PBA was able to to get a great deal with with Flow Bowling, and it was on that platform for a while. Uh, in the meantime, while the, all that was happening, we launched Bowl TV on uh, our own subscription platform. And now that uh, we've done it for a couple of years and I think done a pretty good job at it, we've we've got the opportunity to have everything on one platform. So for me, it was an extremely fulfilling uh, day, but you know, more importantly for the the bowling fans of the world, this is this is awesome because now it's all in one place, uh, one price. It's it's just going to be really really cool. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I met with you and the team there a few weeks ago, and um, to the audience at home, and I think JT could also uh, you know speak to this is that you know this is going to be taken very seriously. You know, now that it is in in one place and one home, you know, we have to really make sure that that this is this is going to be a great product for everybody. And I think the community within Bowl TV, which if you're not you haven't been subscribed to Bowl TV, you definitely should get over there, especially with the savings. Uh, there is a special savings if you sign up by the end of the year. It's ninety nine ninety five. It'll be one nineteen ninety five after the first of the year, which is an incredible value. But I think that. I, th I think that this year, listening to our community and a lot of the feedback, especially with PBA 50 that we took on and everything you've learned in the last couple of years by having tons of content on Bull TV, I think this is going to be the best year coming up. Is that safe to say? Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's funny when, when we made the announcement, uh, Chad Murphy sent a note out to us just saying, you know, this is all great, but I think the work actually starts now. And he's <laughs> absolutely right because – you know, we're going to work our tails off to prove that this is a great product, um, that we can cover this uh, this sport better than anybody. And uh, we're just going to do our best to bring the best possible product to bowling fans throughout the world so we can grow the sport. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be great. And a little bit later in the show, you and I are going to dive into the weeds. I'm going to ask you some questions about who we may, might be seeing on the air, 
some of the enhancements and different things. I know this came together really quickly, so I don't know how much we can talk about or how much is set in stone, but a little bit later we'll talk about, about that. But uh, JT, at, at this point in time, I'd like, uh, I'd like to bring in our first guest. Uh, he is the Deputy Executive Director, uh, Jason Overstreet from USBC. J.O., how are you today? Hello, Mike. Hi, JT. Doing great. Awesome to be here talking about Bull TV. Fantastic stuff that's coming in the future. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and J.O., uh, I know you. I've known you for quite a while. And I, I know that you've been so much into bowling all these years in your role at the United States Bowling Congress. But before that, you were uh, very involved in media. And you were also part of the crew that helped grow Bowl TV. So this particular platform growing has got to be a really big deal for you and really near and dear to your heart. So excited, Mike. I mean, this has been a passion project for, for a long time. When I first started at USBC, like you mentioned, it's been a, been a while back in 2008, coming from a background in television news. I was working here uh, for the Fox Home Station in Dallas before joining USBC. The idea of growing the video presence for bowling, the idea that bowling was just so perfectly situated for quality live content, uh, and now to be able to have the, the PBA as part of Bowl TV joining PWBA and, and have a, a new app that we just launched for Bowl TV as well, and just this quality platform for, for everybody that loves the sport. It, it's just, it's terrific. Yeah, it definitely is for sure. Uh, JT, did you have any questions for J.O. before I, I let you get out of here? I, I don't uh, because we talk every day about this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, J.O. has been instrumental in, in the growth of Bowl TV. He was here at USBC at the beginning when it was launched as a YouTube channel. And so he's been uh, you know, a lot of people don't see him. Uh, for all the things that he's done for this, but he's been like a huge cheerleader for this and done so much work behind the scenes to bring it all together and to make it happen. So, I mean, you know, he, he's obviously our biggest fan and also, you know, a huge part of what we're trying to do here. So it's, it's just great to have, you know, him involved with it as well. Yep. It's awesome. I know you guys have a great working relationship. Uh, let's bring in our next guest, uh, the partner, uh, from PBA, PBA with USBC coming together to put this on Bowl TV. Let's bring in the commissioner of the PBA tour, Tom Clark, who's up in Wisconsin. Hello, Tom. Hello, gentlemen. Great to be here. Great to be here. It is awesome to have you here, and thanks for taking some time to be with us. We were talking backstage before we before we came on, and I, I think the most interesting thing here is is between. Uh, myself, who's been streaming, I'm probably the, the the guy that's done it the least compared to you guys. But Jason Thomas as well. Jo's been involved in this since the day he walked into to bowling headquarters. And yourself, you even were involved with Bowl TV way way back in the day. It's interesting how this has all come full circle, huh, Tom? It really is. It really is. There's a lot of experience uh, experienced people involved with this. And um, but you said it. You said it earlier it's the fans it's the it's it's really all about the fans and giving them the best opportunity to see the best uh bowling possible uh, on one platform is really is really a, a great accomplishment uh to put it all together um but you know the PBA has been uh has really been on the cutting edge of live streaming even before there was YouTube even before there was barely the internet i mean the guys that bought the pba I remember in 2000 chris peters rob glazer and mike slade and, and jason thomas worked with them too and that was part of their vision is that they would get this they'd be one of the first live stream sports and they started something called strike pass and i remember i subscribed to it as a fan first and then i was a guest on it and uh hosting shows and del ballard was the first real host of it and it, it was great stuff but it was when there was dial up you know, you couldn't even really connect through Wi-Fi. And um, but these were brilliant, you know, uh, you know, tech executives that came up with this idea. They were really ahead of the game and not enough people could sign up and it didn't work really well enough to catch hold. So that's why we had to keep revamping and land on extra frame, which everybody's put so much work into and and lead us to this moment. So um, you know, I feel like bowling and the PBA uh, have been uh really on top of this from the start and now everybody's caught up and now it becomes a little bit more regular for people to subscribe to services like this and uh, really prime for a big jump. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tom, I, I think I think the thing that a lot of people, you know, w- wanted to know about was, you know, why did it take this long to come out with an announcement? You you, you had been on Flow, Flow Sports, which was a great partnership, but now it's moved into a bowling company, right? USBC is a bowling company with a bowling network. Uh, why do you think this is going to be successful moving forward with the United States Bowling Congress through Bowl TV? Well, the expertise, uh, the fans already being there um, and being able to uh, be on the same network and advertise and promote to the same people over and over and having the conf- people having the confidence that that uh, they're subscribed to one service and they're going to be able to get everything in bowling. I mean, those are all the, the basics. Um, of it, but uh, it, it it didn't take time because of any kind of hurdle or anything. We we had a relationship and a great partnership with Flow Sports, which is a has a lot of experience in streaming many many sports, and they did a fantastic job uh, when we first started. They kind of you know revolutionized the way we could live stream by putting cameras on every pair of lanes in a in a tournament, and they did many they did video films. They did features. They created websites. They created social media channels, uh, they, and they were a, a great partner for the PBA. And that was before you know the revamp of of Bowl TV. So having a, a, a long term contract with them didn't make it possible to partner with Bowl TV, which started a little bit after Flow. Um, and then the Flow uh, re- relationship ended really amicably. It, it's just things changed. Really, the biggest thing that hit was COVID. I mean, that year after the great 2019 that we had, that year in 2020, it just kind of blew things up. And then we had more opportunities to put different types of events on TV as opposed to streaming. And and so it just it just the the partnership came to an end um, and everybody's friends and everything worked out. And so that opened up this possibility. Um, You just made me think of something, though. The 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 first step to partnering with Bull TV was last year when the when the, the deal with Flow was just about ending, or was, it was this year, um, the deal was just about ending, and we didn't really have a home for the PBA 50 tour. So there was a concern. And I believe there is live coverage on national television of the deal being made between Chad Murphy and I <laughs> to put the PBA 50 on Bull TV because we talked about it at the Masters. I mean – on T- we were sitting on TV watching the Masters show, which, if you remember, was an amazing show and a really difficult week. I mean, it wasn't like – I mean, that was a tough week in the history of bowling. And uh, it was an amazing show, and it did, like, the biggest numbers of the year. And, you know, sometimes you see Chad and I sitting there, and you might want to throw things at the screen. But i tell you, we were getting something good done because really what we were talking about was how could uh, we move – uh, the PBA 50 tour to bowl TV and, and Mike, you were out there covering it all year and uh, turned out great. And that really helped, you know, bridge the gap to a better contract moving forward. Yeah. Shout out to my teammates, Brian Kane and Craig Elliott as well. Uh, my team out there, I got to make sure they get mentions on here. Jo, I got to ask you, you know, when, when, when this becomes available, we know that in, in the bowling streaming business, this is not striking oil. This is not, you know, something that is a huge money maker. If anything, it's an investment back into the sport. Why did the United States Bowling Congress through the Bull TV platform feel like this was a good opportunity to get involved with the PBA? Well, it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody. Uh, It's a win for bowling, uh, for bowlers, for USBC members, for PBA fans. It's like, like Tom talked about. It just makes all the sense in the world to have everything under one umbrella, one platform. And and that's really why USBC has been investing in Bull TV over the years, building something that's going to be available, uh, whether it made sense for PBA or, or even if it just made sense for USBC events, uh, so that we have a way to showcase our champions, showcase our athletes in the sport. It's just it's really important that bowling take care of USBC as bowling take care of bowlers in our sport to make sure that those channels are available. Uh, and I love the story that Tom tells uh, about his conversation with Chad at the Masters because it's just it's an example of a, of a truth that some people don't believe are, is true. And that's that uh, USBC and PBA are, are working together and talking all the time about 
what could be the next opportunity? Our Fox broadcast that we, we do together as partnerships, many marketing and uh, communications projects that we work on together. Uh, we're always looking for, for where those things are that, that can make sense. There is good for PBA, it's business and it's fans. And, and of course, good for the sport as a whole. And, and this is just such a, a great example. And the timing finally worked out to, to make it all come together. And J.O., as a follow-up to that, um, you and Chad and Jason Thomas just don't sit in a room and, and make the decision. This this has to go through a process, right? And and what is the support from the people that help make that decision? How do they feel about all this coming over on onto one platform? Well, I would mean, say that, Mike, broadly is not just about, you know, a bowl TV project, but I mean, all big uh, major strategic initiatives at, at USBC take place in collaboration with our volunteer leaders, so board of directors, uh, committees that support the board as well. So we get direction and bring ideas to, to the board of here are things that we think are valuable uh, for bowling for our members. USBC, as I think most of the people watching know, uh, is a nonprofit. We're a 501c3. So the things that we invest and spend money on are things that uh, our board and our staff uh, believe have value uh, in support of our mission, uh, it's providing you know, services for the sport of bowling. So uh, that investment's been taking place in building this platform over the years. That investment's been taking place in building an app now to, to support it. Uh, and then we take a look at uh, the what makes sense in terms of content, uh, both in terms of hiring folks to go out and cover things that may be USBC events, other partner events, uh, or you know, collaborating at a higher level with, with PBA uh, on, on this project. And uh, it just made sense that, I mean, everyone had a, an easy yes in terms of this thing that we wanted to explore. Uh, and then the conversation through the details uh, were just some things that, that needed to be worked out, but it was all done in a, in a terrific collaborative way. And we're just really happy with the result. Jason, thank you for that explanation, because I think a lot of people don't understand that, you know, this goes through a board, it goes through a finance committee. And of course it has to be welcomed and an idea that, that the folks that work there want to actually execute and do a great job with. So that's great. I want to ask Tom, uh, we've got all this new programming. Uh, what can the fans look forward to seeing on bowl TV this upcoming year, uh, from a PBA standpoint, PBA junior, get into whatever, whatever yeah. you'd like to, man. There's going to be a lot of action. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty cool season, particularly if you're going to be subscribing to the, to this service, because in addition to the major championships being covered and, and held in a, in a way that puts more of that action on television than, than ever before and has every single major championship on the PBA tour on big Fox broadcast network television, um, which I, I'm just, I'm as ecstatic about that. I mean, it, when you think about, you know, where, where pro bowling was, I mean, uh, it's the first time that, that this has happened in so long to be back on broadcast, free TV with the major championships of bowling. Um, and, and two of them are, are USBC events like the US Open, the, um, the uh, Masters, and, and uh, both of those shows will have, will have a preliminary round shows on FS1 and then the finals on Fox broadcast and uh, doing similar things with the tournament of champions, the players championship, the world championship. And uh, so it's going to be awesome television, but then there are five singles events that are going to be covered live start to finish, including the stepladder finals um, of classic singles events. There's going to be a doubles event. That's going to be start to finish only on bowl TV, just like those singles events. And there's going to be a culminating event with the top point getters and those singles classic events at the uh, at a, a special event we're doing called the PBA Skills Challenge uh, in Detroit. And uh, and so that whole thread will be f fun to watch. And those events are not small. I mean, you've seen in the in the past, maybe we've done some things that were super regionals or regional events being elevated to national status. And we cover them on extra frame or on flow and. And these events are $150,000 purse events. Um, there's, uh, they're going to be, you know, limited fields to uh, around 64 players in each one of those events. They're going to be high impact uh, title events where every every one of the best players on the PBA tour will be in those events, and they're along the way uh, around those those major championships. Um, 
the one the one event that I'm I'm probably looking forward to the most is the Tournament of Champions. I always look forward to that one the most. It's our signature event. We're back in the you know the home of bowling and Riviera Lanes and just the the ghosts in that building are incredible. It's kind of like our Fenway Park or uh, for bowling and we're back at Riviera and we're going to run the whole tournament of champions, just like in a classic format with 18 qualifying games, top 24 being in a round Robin, all of that will be on bowl TV and we'll play it down. And then we go on TV and it's actually going to be a 17 players extended step ladder starting on a Friday and going into Saturday and then on to Sunday where those top players after the round of 24 um, will be placed in order. And uh, it has a chance to be the craziest thing that's ever happened in pro bowling and or or the, the leader could could win like they like they deserve to be. But any one of those players that, that finish in the top 17 and make a show, the worst they can do is finish one one spot lower than their their qualifying position, which uh, I think is most fair for the players. And um, it, it, at first it takes a minute to to think about how crazy it is to extend a step ladder into multiple shows like that. But the more I've been thinking about it, the more I can't wait to see what happens, you know? So uh, there's, and then the world series is back and it's all going to be fantastic. And we haven't even talked about the PBA 50 tour, which has some really cool new events coming this year too. Once everybody gets to digest that schedule when it comes out and you'll see a new tournament of champions on the PBA 50 tour. And you'll see a, a new PBA 50 World Series of Bowling that's going to happen with multiple events leading to a PBA 50 World Championship. So I think a lot of a lot of excitement. Yeah, I would say so. J.O., after hearing all that, um, this is definitely going to be the, the best year we've ever seen, uh, I think, in, in professional bowling, not only on the PBA side. We've also got PWBA that was announced recently. PBA 50 is coming out. Uh, what do you get from what Tom just said with that schedule release? You just get the whole calendar. I and mean, that's what's so great is every month of the year, you're going to have something compelling to watch. You've got all the fantastic PBA events Tom talked about, the PBA 50, uh, and then the PWBA in there too, plus the collegiate junior gold event. So, I mean, it's, it's what is important, I think, when you're talking about value. So ultimately, we want people to be – subscribers to Bull TV because it's worth it because the content uh, is there all the time to where, you know, in this example, as an annual subscription that we're offering $99 uh, through the end of the calendar year, you're, that buys you, you know, great stuff for the whole year that you're purchasing uh, without major gaps where there isn't a whole lot going on. And so I think that's part of the difference maker in this is that uh, with all of these uh, events married into one platform, it's just it's a no-brainer when you think about the number of things that you get to watch as a bowling fan. Yeah, and and I, you just gave me another really good idea. I'm going to write it down here, but um, I just got my Christmas list taken care of. I mean, it's it's early December right now. What's a better present? Subscription to Bowl TV. <laughs> I mean, there you go. I don't have to go to the mall. I don't have to do anything. Here's here's what you get. <laughs> oh, I just gave it away, but. Hopefully uh, my friends and family don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Took the surprise away, but that's a great gift, don't you think? Well, we, we, we think so. And also we wanted to give an opportunity for, you know, those people that are fans that are paying attention to this, that, okay, you know, get in and buy it now at a reduced rate um, because that hoping that, you know, feel like takes care of our existing audience, both uh, that are PBA fans that may have been, you know, flow subscribers, those that, um, for existing, you know, Bolt TV subscribers that this ends up being, you know, really said it's all about being a good value. There's a lot of stuff out there you can subscribe to. Uh, it's gotta be worth your dollar. Uh, and we're committed to delivering the quality and to make sure that it is. And if you're already a subscriber, by the way, you will renew at 99.95 going forward. So you already in that 99.95 bracket. Um, Jason Overstreet, before we, we let you go here, um, I watch other podcasts and there were some people last week talking about this deal before we were able to come forward with this show. And they were throwing out all these different numbers of how much this should cost. And the host of one of the shows said that he would be comfortable paying $20 a month for this. Okay. 
So I think you had a little opportunity to charge more, in my personal opinion. Why did you guys settle at one nineteen ninety five? Because in my opinion, I think that is a tremendous value with everything that you get. Well, it's and the one nineteen ninety five after January one, so promotional of ninety nine dollars between between now and then, and then also a monthly option of of twelve ninety five a month uh, for those that uh, might prefer to come in for certain things that are seasonal in the calendar. And the the short answer, Mike, is that you know we we don't want price people priced out. Uh, we want bowling fans to have access to the content. I mean, USBC and our, our mission uh, is to, to do what's right for the sport, provide those services to our members, to our bowlers. So um, exposure is key too. Uh, the, the maximum, if you will, revenue point uh, isn't necessarily the, the most important thing. It's also having accessibility uh, to as many people as possible, but yet still having enough revenue that we can cover the cost of covering many, many events because we want lots of exposure. We want seniors. We want youth products. We want collegiate. We, of course, the PBA, PWBA. So, you know, those dollars have to have to be enough to, to make sure that we can uh, keep the production running uh, and also keep investing in what's next because it's got to be good. Again, we got to have those cameras to, to show everybody what they want to see. Uh, we got to keep that mobile app up to date. We got to have the experience in that mobile app be good. Uh, and, you know, that requires funding, too. So it's looking at that sweet spot. Um, but but ultimately, you know, we want people to be able to, to see this. We want the exposure for our partners at PBA. We want the exposure for the PWBA tour uh, and all the other things that are on this platform as well. Wonderful. And uh, if people do want to sponsor uh, Bowl TV, they can get in touch with you as well, right? If they wanted to come in and sponsor some of the coverage. We're always happy to, to, to take, take calls. You know, that's a, that's a marketing department, but we'll certainly point, point everyone the right way. But I mean, that's another point of it, though, that when you're subscribing for something, too, you don't get inundated with all, all the ads and things that you might on a, on a free platform. And so are we going to have messages from, from partners, you know, things, the opportunities for our gold partners? And that, that's another value that we believe we're going to provide to those that are, you know, brands within the industry, but yet not have it be uh, junk that, that bowlers aren't interested in. I mean, that's, that's the thing here. I mean, you've heard it from, from Mike and from Tom and from Jason Thomas. And those of you that watch bowl TV know these are bowlers working on this project, whether it's the people that are, that are out covering it, whether it's those of us that are, you know, talking about how to structure it and then talking to the development team about what features are we going to have in there. Uh, we want to build something that's great for bowlers and that's great for covering bowling. Uh, and when, you have something that's being built with only that sole focus in mind. Uh, there's just that much more opportunity to, to make it good. Well said, uh, J.O. Thanks for being here. I'm going to have one more final question for Tom. Anything else you'd like to let the folks know J.O. before we let you get out? Just thrilled about uh, the, the relationship and, you know, Tom with PBA uh, Bolero. And so, so much is made uh, of the fiction uh, about, uh, our organizations or companies, you know, not being uh, aligned or there being conflict. And I would just say uh, it's just so much of it is just uh, humorous because really we're, we're complementary and work together in so many ways, uh, whether it be PBA uh, or, or uh, many of the great things that happen uh, in, in those centers across the country and all the terrific opportunities for competitive bowling that are out there. So just thank you to, to PBA and, and Valero uh, and everyone that was involved in this project. Uh, for making it happen. Uh, it's, it's great for the sport and we're just thrilled to now deliver on it. Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to maybe seeing you on the air once. I'll try to drag you in maybe one time. Every now and then you can call me out of retirement, man. It's good to see you. Appreciate it. Good to see you. All right. That's Jason Overstreet, the uh, deputy executive director from United States Bowling Congress. Thank him for being here. Tom, uh, my, my last question for you, and then I'll give you an opportunity to talk about anything maybe I may have missed. Uh, is is I just want to know uh, this upcoming season, uh, where do you feel, I know you went over the schedule and everything with everybody, but where do you feel the, the, the PBA is at right now, right? I mean, you guys got the deal with Fox, you've got this deal done, uh, you've got the Bolero tournament for league bowlers. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on with the PBA in general. Like, how are you feeling about this year going in now that this is done and, and it's just time to go out and watch everybody bowl? 
Yeah, you said it. There, there's <laughs> there's a lot uh, going on, and it's all big picture. It's all positive for the competitive side of bowling and creating the more um, connected fan base to the PBA and the, P and the PWBA um, because of these programs that have been um, started this year. Now, when you're in the middle of it, I can tell you that it's a lot of work. And so you're kind of like almost buried. And you said it, you can't wait for the actual bowling to start. But I'll tell you, we're working on 2024 right now. So it's almost like a, you're you're confused with exactly what you're talking about this year, next year, the year after that, and continuing to build on the momentum that we had. I'm, I'm happy and, and uh, glad that uh, J.O. brought up Bolero and their support of growing programs under the PBA umbrella, like the PBA Junior, the PBA League Bowler Certification Program, that new PBA uh, League Bowler Certification National Championships Tournament. Um, all of those things help all of bowling to give more opportunities in the competitive side, attach it to the highest level of the game, the PBA being involved. Um, it gives our players more opportunities gives them more opportunities to have influence. And, um, you know, I'm really happy that that uh, Bolero uh, saw the value in this partnership. And, uh, you know, our, our VP of media, Carissa Del Bene, you know, finished this deal with our with the Bolero legal department and, you know, working with uh, this new ownership and the, and the corporate structure, you know, is different for the PBA and and you can see the the potential benefits and growth uh, that is that's right in front of us now. So, you know, I did think that when we were able to to move, uh, when our, our previous owners were were ready to um, to sell the PBA, that Bolero would be a, a strong potential uh, owner of it because of the, their platform and having over 300 bowling centers and. And now that they've gone public and had success going public, um, I think you really this would be the time to buy. You know, I think that uh, bowling's on the on the rise. I, I think the game has always provided great thrills. We have great players from all over the world now that are going to have more opportunities to show their stuff. And the more we can connect with people to grow that fan base, the core audience then other people will come in to say, what's going on here? This is interesting. And we can, uh, we can take uh, the PBA to where, where, where we've all been working so hard to, to take it. And I think that's key for the whole, the whole sport. So appreciate the question because yeah, that's kind of the question I ask myself all the day, all the time. All right, where are we? Mm -hmm. And what are we doing? And how is this working to get us to the next steps? And I feel like big picture that all of those things are happening. So, yeah, I had somebody this week ask me, how come you don't run the IB open anymore? OK, because we discontinued that event about four years ago. And if we look at the marketplace back in 2011, there was no PWBA and hats off to the team in Arlington at the International Bowling Campus that have all come together, BPAA, Strike 10 and, and USBC to, to bring back that women's tour. Right. I had a lot of ladies used to participate in that event. Uh, there were a lot of other tournaments that popped up. And the regional program, I don't think, was thriving back in 2011 from the PBA side. It was still there and it was doing OK. But I think the job that you guys have done on the PBA level with drawing interest, having more events and getting those events filled up with great tournament directors and a great team and now the partnership with Bolero and everything that's happened at USBC as well with bringing back PWBA, promoting their events. And then for all of that to happen with a pandemic, when bowling was shut down for a period of time and for all of us to come through, I don't have to run an IB open anymore. There are plenty of offerings being ran by experts in the field. And I just appreciate the opportunity that you've given me a long time ago to be on the air for the old extra frame product. Jason Thomas taking me in under his wing and welcoming me with open arms when I was just a young kid. And to Jason Overstreet, Chad Murphy, Roger Nordic, and JT for wanting to me be part of Bowl TV and host a show like this. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I couldn't be any happier. And when this news came down, I was like, man, I got to be part of this. They want me to be part of this. This is a dream job for me. And I just want to thank you and everybody involved that's made this happen for, for a kid that just loved bowling. 
Hey, that's great. Can I ask for one thing? Okay. Extra large. One of the <laughs> just, just, just could you just say, and maybe one for my son, you know. Okay. All right. All right. I think we can, we can probably do that. Tom, I want to thank you for your time here today. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the road, seeing you around. Uh, thanks to you and Carissa and the team at, at Bolero PBA getting this deal done. You guys could have probably launched your own network if you wanted to, but you decided to partner with USBC Bowl TV product. We've got a great price out there. And uh, when I come back, we're going to play a little promo here we put together for, uh, for, for the new Bowl TV uh, service. Uh, we'll have 2018 PBA Player of the Year, Andrew Anderson. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Joining me now is the 2018 PBA Player of the Year. I also consider him maybe just a friend, uh, Andrew Anderson. So. What's going I on, buddy? So. We've had a lot of experience together, Mike. I think that we're more than friends at this point. Yeah, I think so as well. So uh, obviously you've been tuning into the show here today. Big news. Uh, you are also, as I have here in my notes, is you are part of the uh, of, of the USBC board as well. So you've been privy. You've been kind of sitting on this information for a little while. What are your thoughts uh, being a board member and a PBA player uh, in regards to the, the announcement with, uh, with Bowl TV uh, having PBA coverage on it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the word I've come to mind is like finally, you know, first and foremost, you know, thanks to Flow Bowling because they did do a great job. You know, as Tom said earlier, relationships end. Uh, I got to make some new friendships with those at Flow, and um, they, did, they did a wonderful job, really. Uh, we as bowlers were really happy. Uh, for what they did. And now, you know, we're just taking the next step to see what, what could come. And yeah, being part of the USBC board, and, and as you said, sitting on information is is very tough at times because I am eager and excited, you know, for people to see this and share it. And this is uh, one of the biggest things we could announce, right? I mean, getting all of bowling on one platform. Uh, something that comes to mind, my aunt and uncle a couple of years ago, they uh, signed up for Flow to watch me on Flow, and then uh, I bowled Team USA trials, and they're like, "Well, can we watch that on Flow?" And I said, "No, you actually have to get a Bowl TV subscription." And you know, I always wondered like how many people were asking that question out there, and you know, now the, the question doesn't have to be asked. You just get Bowl TV, and and anything you want to watch will be there. So hats off to the Team in Arlington. And that was a very easy decision for the USBC board to say, "Yeah, let's go with this." I mean, this is super exciting. And we, as uh, I think I can speak for everybody in that room, that it was a very easy decision and we're all on board with it. Cool. Uh, the, the decision and the announcement has been pretty pretty fresh and new. Have you had a chance to, to talk with any other PBA players or the players saying anything about this uh, new announcement? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's always rumors, false narratives that go around and uh, people have been talking about this idea for a while, you know, um, as, a, as a player and some of the questions I get asked is what is going to happen next year? Was it going to be PBA and YouTube? Was PBA going to do their own thing? Was both TV going to come about, you know, especially after the, the PBA 50. Um, and I think that the players are excited. I think that they have a lot of common interest, the PBA and the USBC and just doing what's right for the bowlers and the fans to watch us as often as possible. I mean, that's the main goal here, right? Is getting bowlers to watch bowlers and then and then broaden it from there. And I think that this is the best avenue possible at the moment for us. And, uh, you know, uh, man, JT and the team always do a great job, I think. And, you know, I'm very thankful that both you and them bring me in the booth to talk here and there. And um, I think it's going to be great for bowling. I really do. I think you guys brought up a lot of great points throughout the day. I'm just going to echo some of those. But all the bowling in one spot, man. Uh, it's been it's been waiting to happen for a long time coming. 
he kind of beat me to the punch there on the having you in the booth. Uh, <laughs> I, I will say that I absolutely love having you in the booth. Uh, I think you do great, by the way. I'm not saying that because you're just here because, you know, I'd text you and tell you. If yeah, I, I appreciate that. Job. Uh, but yeah, no, I thought you also did a really nice job on those CBS Sports Network shows uh, when you were doing some sidelining there. I thought it brought some nice, unique uh, perspective as well. So maybe Tom's still listening. I'd like to see you involved in, in some of those shows. I know they got some qualifying Back, shows. Back on the door. Yeah. As well. The problem is with you is is you're such a, a damn good bowler. Is that is that uh, you don't want to be in the booth? You want to be out uh, there on the lane. So I got to ask. It's a win-win for me, but I definitely would rather be competing. Yeah, so so where's your game at? I got to ask a bowling question here, right? I mean, yeah. how, what what are your expectations for this upcoming season, and what do you think about the tour season in general? Yeah, I mean, getting the tour schedule over here is just always exciting, and I know Tom is watching. We as bowlers just can't wait to get it and see what we're actually doing. But uh, a 17 person step ladder at the TOC. Some good news for me is I generally bowl pretty well at Riviera, so that's exciting. But uh, yeah, I mean, the bowling this year, I'm taking a different route. Most years, I'm kind of burnt out by this time of the year because I bowl so much. Then when tour comes around, I'd like to be super sharp. Uh, I actually took some downtime this year. So right about now is when I'm going to start competing a bunch again, get on the lanes every day, and get ready for the tour season. We have a lot coming up, and, you know, um, we're going to try to do the best we can. And uh, honestly, I just think we're at a good spot. You know, I think we're in a really good spot. It always seems like fans are excited to see us, you know, we always like have these tournaments that build up to something and then uh, having all major telecasts on big Fox is just a huge step in the right direction, getting people watching us. And hopefully I'm on a few of those shows. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's time to get back in the winner's circle here this year, Andrew. So this is my personal call out for you right now. I think (laughs) think I've been uh, calling myself out here for about a year or so. So I don't think I need too much of it, but I do appreciate it, and I, I think that, um, you know, I think it's a great year ahead, not only for me, but for us as players. Yeah, I think so, too, and I think they've done a great job with the uh, prize funds and offerings, and you, you made a you made a ball company change last year. Uh, you seem to be kind of really matching up with the equipment well now. Uh, you're healthy again, right? Yeah, I'm feeling good, man. I mean, I like to... Uh, I don't like to put crutches out there, you know, whether I'm healthy or not, I'm still going to compete and try to compete at the highest level, uh, beating the best in the world. Not at hundred percent is hard, but, uh, I'm going to do what I can regardless. So, um, we're going to see what we can do. And, uh, you know, these new telecast formats, uh, I'm interested to see if it shows some new faces on the TV shows. Uh, you know, we have a lot of the best holes in the world constantly making TV rightfully so. Right. And now we're giving them a little bit more opportunity to see some new faces and see what they can do. Yeah. And you're coming to us there from the turbo headquarters. Cause you are, uh, what is your official title there at turbo? I'm the turbo turbo associate head coach. So pretty much any coaching or clinics that go on, I either run them or are heavily involved. Um, you know, as a bowler, I compete all the time and my way of giving back is coaching. I, I really do love coaching and, and going around the world doing it. So um, I have a lot of hobbies. You know, I play video games, play basketball, just like everybody else. But really what I do on my downtime is a lot of coaching, giving back to the sport that has given so much to me. So we're going to continue to do that. And then, you know, about this time of the year is when I wind that down. I just uh, start practicing every day and competing because, as we know, the first five, six months of the year is really heavily involved with the PBA. Yeah. And if you want to follow Andrew, I, I watch him practicing and giving tips and lessons all the time. You can check him out on Instagram and Facebook and probably Snapchat. And TikTok. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not giving my Snapchat out, but okay. you right. can follow me on Instagram at <laughs> Anderson 300. All right, Andrew, thanks for being here today. Uh, looking forward to seeing you a lot on Bowl TV this year as a player. And on those maybe off weeks, maybe we'll see yeah. you in the booth. Hopefully there's not too many of those. Yeah, and uh, seriously, thank you to both the PBA and USBC and Bolero for getting this done. I think that this is going to be great. I mean, you guys have talked about it all day, but uh, I'm excited, man. I think everybody's excited. I can tell you, everybody in Arlington, when we were just there talking about it and when we knew that deal was going to get done, a lot of excitement. And I know that there's a lot of investment going into it. So I think it's going to be really good, and they're going to put on a great show. All right. Happy New Year. We'll see you after the first. Happy holidays, guys. See ya. All right, everybody. That's Andrew Anderson. We've heard from Jason Overstreet, Tom Clark, and Andrew Anderson. And now to get into a little bit more 
of the weeds and a little bit more behind the scenes and what we may be able to expect this year on Bull TV. Let's bring in uh, Jason Thomas again. JT, a lot of information there uh, given by both Tom, J.O., and, of course, Andrew's uh, initial reaction to this thing. Uh, I want to I want to talk to you a little bit. I mean, we've had some some conversations regarding what the programming could look like uh, this year as far as personalities, enhancements, things like that. What would you like to tell uh, everybody at home uh, regarding this season? Yeah, it's it's going to be great. I mean, I think J.O. said it. I think Tom said it. Uh, Andrew said it. This is a platform for bowlers that is run by bowlers. Uh, I'm a bowler, you're a bowler. We're not as good as Andrew Anderson, obviously, but we understand bowling. We understand how to bring the coverage and the things that the people out there watching want to see. They want to see players in the booth. They want to hear what's happening out on the lanes. They want to know what ball the guys are throwing so that they could use it in their own game. So we're going to bring all of that for you here on bowl tv if you've been a subscriber in the past you've seen that you've seen the way we've covered the events you've seen the way we've covered pwba you've seen how we've covered the masters in the u.s open the last couple of years when we've done those events so you're going to see a lot of that plus some some new little tricks that we've got up our sleeve now that uh now that we've got pba you know as part of the platform yeah and and i i guess it's safe to say that uh that i've that i've signed a deal with you guys to continue being part of bowl tv and in some well, i was sort saving that for last obviously because that's okay. the most important right. news right so it's pretty important <laughs> Tracy. Uh, and, and and obviously you know you 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 oversee you know this entire project you're the one that has to schedule the people to be where they're going to be and then fill in yourself and roles that wherever you need to be um, so, so that you've got your work cut out for you this year. I mean, I remember back in the day, right. It would be, you, you have one stream and that was the only thing on all day. So everybody in bowling, if you're at league or whatever, everybody, everybody's watching the same one stream. Right. And then, it, and then, you know, flow did push us as an industry to, to make more than one channel available, Absolutely. six, seven, eight channels. Right. So that's yeah. one great thing that they, that they did do. They did yeah. a lot of things great, but that one there, I think push the bar for all of us. Right. Absolutely. And now we're, we're, we've, we've this year even, and it's going to be worse, but good for the end user uh, that there's going to be multiple events going on all at the same time. So there, there could be times when you scroll on that bottom bar that you have to click like seven, eight times before you get to what you want to watch. I yeah. mean, that, that's unbelievable to think about. Yeah. No, you know, I mean, you know, obviously PBA, that's a huge draw. PWBA is a huge draw, but there'll be times when we've got PWBA, PBA 50, and maybe a youth event or a collegiate event going all at the same time or a TNBA or a UBA event going at the same time. And so, you know, if, if, you're, if what you're watching on PBA isn't that interesting, you just switch over and watch a UBA event. Uh, you know, you might see that happen more in the other direction, but you know what? There's going to be so many events so often on bowl TV, there's always going to be something if you're a bowling fan to watch. Yeah. And if you've never been part of bowl TV, um, if you've been hidden under a rock or you just got out of jail or something like that, glad, glad you're out. You uh, you'll see an interactive community. Uh, you'll see giveaways that we do throughout broadcast, some more than others uh, depends on the host. Although I think that's uh no longer going to be depending on the host. I think we just got to do it. Uh, those of us, if you know, and you've been around on the PBA 50 side of things, Brian Kane and uh, Craig Elliott and myself, we, we like to have fun with those giveaways uh, for sure. Well, I but think, I think that is absolutely the biggest thing that's been great about bowl TV is, and we, we market it this way is become part of bowling's coolest community. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, you get to hang out with bowlers and watch bowling and talk with your buddies that you make online and so it's just if you're if you're a bowling fan and, and you love bowling and you you want to be around people that love it just like you do bowl tv is the place for you to go um can i can i put you on the spot and just ask you what personalities you know we may see as part of bowl tv this upcoming year um i know i like to leak stuff sometimes i get in trouble for it but what can you say about that yeah, I think there's you're going to see some consistency with what we've done in the past, you know, with PWBA where, you know, we're going to talk to Emil Williams Jr., make sure he's going to be out there for the, the PWBA tour this year. Um, you know, we've also got you guys going out for PBA. Um, but I said at, at the beginning of this segment, 
the most important thing I think people want to hear is they want to hear from the bowlers themselves. You know, they love it when we have Andrew Anderson in the booth and he's talking about, you know, the balls he used and the way that he, you know, went through his, his progression of bowling balls over the course of the block and how the lanes played. They love it when we have the ball reps come in in the middle of the block and explain what's happening out there. Cause you guys do a great job of calling it and giving your, your spin on what's happening. They love seeing the ball reps, the people that are actually out there talking to the bowlers while the bowling is happening. And so I think that's what makes Bowl TV so great. And then the other thing that makes it so great, too, is you can actually ask the questions. You know, you can put the question in the chat and then we can ask it for you. You can get an answer almost immediately every time if you're watching Bowl TV. So it's just it's just an awesome place to be again. And like I said, we've got a lot of cool things that we're, we're working on right now for the coverage for 2023. Yeah, you said it. You know, when you watch television at home or Netflix or whatever it may be, it's a one-way conversation. They're talking to you and you sit there and then you can take to social media and give your comments. But on Bowl TV, it is an interactive show. Right. And I can't tell you how many times, and I'm not the only one, all the hosts, sometimes we even get too carried away with it. Somebody will come on and say, hey, could you tell me how so-and-so is bowling? They happen to be on one of the two pairs that you don't have cameras for, even though you have eight channels streaming. Because sometimes we're in 50 lane bowling centers is the best we can do. Or yeah. maybe we don't have the bandwidth or whatever it can be, right? And we actually take the time to go walk over or look in the standings and say, oh yeah, hey, you know, James M. Yes, they just they just bowled 224 and are now 173 over and about 20 pins outside of the cut number with two to go, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So. And it's all about doing, you know, giving the fans what they want, you know, and that's, I think that's what we've tried to do at Bull TV and we're going to continue doing that. Well, bud, I, I personally want to thank you for letting me continue to be part of it and the opportunities you've given me. And I think that the future is super bright. You're welcome. Uh, you're a huge part of this. We couldn't have done it without you and all the other folks that have been involved with it. Emil Williams, Aaron Smith, Matt Canazzaro, Lucas Wiseman, you know, everybody who's ever been a part of it, you know, has a, has a part in bringing this, making it happen and doing what's right for, for bowling, which is, you know, having everything on one platform. Yeah. And a, and a big thank you to the players that give their time to come sit in the booth. I remember last year, uh, Anthony Simonson hit me up and said, Hey, you got anybody for tonight's match play? I'm going to be there watching anyway. Yes, please. So, you know, any players that want to be in the booth, uh, please make sure you reach out. And that goes for PWBA, PBA, uh, PBA 50 and all those sorts of things. JT, any, any closing thoughts here? I know we got some upcoming events and whatnot. Yeah, we've got a couple of uh, youth events to fill out the end of the year. We've got a USA Bowling event next weekend. Uh, we've got a two collegiate events happening in Las Vegas that'll wrap up the year for us. And then we kick everything off. I mean, we're, we're starting with a bang that first week of January. Team USA trials and the PBA RPI events going on at the same time. So, And, and, it's, and it's not going to slow down at all from there. So I'm just kind of trying to pin my ears back and uh and hold on for dear life because we have a lot of great stuff coming your way here on bull tv yeah, i think i got 105 days on the road between january and may so but i'm looking forward to it more than ever safe travels yes thank you very much <laughs> so just to recap everybody bowl tv now the home pba pba 50 pba junior pba regionals of course the wonderful pwba tour junior gold collegiate events and tmba uba and whatever else we end up streaming that I may have forgotten. And you can get all of that for $99.95 annual between now and the end of the year. If you're already a subscriber, it automatically renews at $99.95. And then starting January 1st, if you snooze, you lose $19.95 because it's $119.95 uh, after, the, after the first of the year, which is still an extreme value. I want to thank our guests that we had here today. I want to thank Jason Overstreet from the United States Bowling Congress, Tom Clark from the PBA Tour, Jason Thomas, as always, for producing, and of course, the 2018 PBA Player of the Year, Andrew Anderson, who said on this broadcast he's going to get back in the winner's circle this year and join us in the booth. So for everybody here uh, at, at Bowl TV, thanks so much for watching today. We're looking forward to seeing you all of next year and the remaining events this year here on Bowl TV. Have a safe uh, rest of December. Enjoy your holidays, everybody, and we'll see you on a future Sport of Bowling show. Have a good day.